Hello, my name is Kain Sandogenius and today we are going to continue in, uh, from tutorial 4 and today we are going to discuss residual networks. Residual network is very important before we can do fault forecasting algorithm because fault forecasting algorithm is actually what I wanted to do in this tutorial but I find out that you need to understand what residual network is and how to create a residual network. So let's discuss that in a few minutes and then take some examples. Then in tutorial five, we now go into Ford forecasting algorithm. Remember to subscribe by clicking on the subs sub uh, subscribe button below this video. Also like it, share it with your friends uh, who may also uh, take, um, who may be taking a course in uh, computer science, maybe data structure or flow networks. All right, so what is a residual network? Already you know what a flow network is. Now a residual network is a network with edges that has residual capacities. In a flow network, they have, you already know about capacities of the flow uh, network as well as the capacity of the edge. But in this case, in a residual network, the capacities of the edges are residual capacities. The next logical question you want to ask is what's, what is residual capacity? Before we answer that question, take note that a residual network has the same set of vertices as the original network. So the same set of vertices or nodes. But then the residual network may contain some edges that did not exist in the original flow network. So what is residual capacity? Residual capacity is the amount of flow that can be increased or decreased, right? I think I'll clarify this. So take for example, uh, let me take my pen. Let's say we have a network like this. Let's say we have this. Because I want to explain to you uh, what, a resi what residual capacity is. So this is start, this is T. And now we have, let's say, one, two. We have a flow of one and a capacity of two. It means that we can increase this flow by what? By one, right? We can increase this flow by one. So let's call it INC is one. Can we decrease this flow? Yes, we can decrease it by one because we can decrease it uh, to zero, two we can increase it to what to two two so we can decrease by one and we can increase by one so residual capacities are these numbers that we can either increase or decrease the flow by right the amount of flow can be uh the amount of flow can be that can be increased is represented by a forward edge in the residual network and the amount of flow that can be decreased is represented by a backward edge in the flow network so let me just uh, give uh, another illustration so assuming we create a residual network and flow between s and a we have a forward edge of what of one and a backward edge of one so this is just an illustration that show what you can what can you can create from a flow network when you have a an edge with a flow of one and a capacity of two all right let's get to where it's interesting let's take a typical example let's take this uh, network and then we want to create a, a residual network from this network let me grab my pen uh, I'm going to use the color black right okay let's try out a different color this time blue so we say that in a residual network it will be the same set of edges so i'm going to use the same set of edges the same set of edges we say so right so nothing changes in terms of the edges so we have s we have t we have d c we have a, B, all right? Now we say what is going to change will be the vertices. 
sorry, the edges between the, the vertices. So take this one, for example, we can increase it by what? We can increase it from one to three because capacity is three and the flow is just one, meaning that we can add two more. So it means that we can increase this by two. So we add a forward edge of two. We can decrease this from one to zero, right? So we can decrease it from one to zero, meaning that we can decrease it by one. From one to zero is one. So we add a backward edge, I hope I get it right, of one. I'm sure you get the point now. So let's take this one from S to B. Can we increase? No, we cannot increase. So there is no forward edge, but we can decrease it from two to zero. So we have a decrease from two to zero and we say to decrease means a backward edge. So I'm going to add a backward edge on this. We can decrease by two. <clears throat> Let's take this from A to B. We can increase from one to three, meaning an increment of two, a forward edge. That is a, an edge in the same direction. We can increase by two. A backward edge, we can decrease this from one to zero meaning a decrease of what? Of one. So a backward edge of one. So in this case, we have two, two. I'm going to complete it and hope that you follow. What do we have here? We have only a backward edge of two. What do we have uh, between these? I hope this line should be straight. We only have, uh, should have a backward edge because we can only decrease of one. Here we, we have a forward edge. We can increase this by what? By one. And we can decrease it from two to zero, meaning we can decrease it by two. In this case, let's see, we can increase from one to three, meaning an increment of two and we can decrease the backward edge by what? By, by one. That is from one to zero. The same goes from here. In this case, we can increase by from two to three is an increment of one. And we can decrease by two from two to zero. In this case, let's see. We can increase from one to two, so we can increase by one, and we can decrease by one, that is from one to zero. <coughs> so this is our residual network. I hope this is very clear because we are going to use it for forecasting algorithm because this uh, residual network helps us to see how we can maximize the flow. It helps us to see uh, edges where we can admit more flows represented by backward, uh, backward edges. All right. So I'm sure you've gotten clear understanding of residual network. Uh, try to uh, erase this or try to uh, uh, Pause the video at some point before this diagram has been created and try to create it by yourself. Now, this is some of the notations. It's very easy. Sorry, let's go back. Residual network is a graph V of E of F. So the same V, right, in the original graph, but now we have E of F. And we have capacity for the residual network is given by the, the capacity of the original graph minus the flow in the original graph. That is exactly the amount that it can be increased by and that gives a forward edge. And so on and so forth. I don't like notations, but if you like, just try to get your head around this. Uh, it's really not very difficult. I'd like to thank you for viewing. So the next tutorial will be tutorial five. That will be for forecasting algorithm. It's also going to be interesting. Remember to click and subscribe to subscribe and get notified when I make new lessons. Also like this video if it's been informative for you. Share it with some of your friends and let me know if it's been okay by leaving a good comment uh, below in the comment box. Thank you for viewing.